Hey everybody, it's Alex, and uh, we're going to do our one of our uh, Monday Facebook Zoom shows here, which we've started doing, and uh, already we have one person waiting. So let me let me first of all let me take off the uh, uh, the uh, uh, wait a minute. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, but the, but the, I'm going to turn off the waiting room so that people can join us easily. And then we, let's admit Robert Natali. Okay, um, there we go. Hello, Robert. How are you today? I'm fine, Alex. How are you this afternoon? I'm uh, I'm I am uh, uh, I'm fine. I'm feeling good actually. Well, that, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I I got my um, I got my PSA test back, and which is PSA in case people don't know is for prostate. It's a uh, it's a test sure. to give you a blood test, and then they check the, your PSA. And if your PSA is high, you probably got prostate cancer. And if it's low, you don't have prostate cancer. And so after you've had prostate cancer, they take it to see if the radiation worked and the seeds worked and so on. And uh, anything over a four, you got to worry about. So zero to four mm -hmm. in the score. So mine came back, I got mine today, and I was really anticipating that, hey, I was going to be somewhere up around a three or something like that. Guess what? I'm a 0 0.02. Fantastic. That's next to not having a prostate at all. <laughs> and my, te my testosterone. I can't find it. My testosterone is somewhere in the middle, so you know. That's great. Uh, yeah, that's good news. It looks like it, it. It was good news. I mean, I have my doctor hasn't called, and I doubt if he will, because there's no need to, unless he says. By the way, that's I have news. news for you. We your prostate cancer has been cured, but when we did the CT scan, we found lung cancer. You know, or something like that. Yeah, right, right. I had that, I had that happen to a friend of mine. He went in for a CT scan for uh, diverticulitis, and they found lung cancer by accident because they rushed him too fast into the CT scan. Wow. So, wow. Uh, you know, and eventually it killed him. So, I, I, at that point, we were saying, well, it saved your life, but I guess it didn't really, you know. So, how are you well, guys doing? Uh, it's great Colleen, news. Steve Bender, and here comes Len. Uh, and I'm trying to remember your last name now because I saw it on the credits of the movie you're in. Uh, Low. Frisco. Frisco. Yeah. 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 He's in a movie. <laughs> I mean, kind of almost a movie. It, it's, it's almost it, a movie. It's almost a movie. It is a movie. Listen. It is. They, they, I think they did a great job for a bunch of people that that's their first feature film. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, uh, let me put it this way. I am never going to criticize somebody who did that kind of, that kind of thing. Because it's, it's, it's two years of work right there. It's two years of work, number one. Number two, they probably, have they ever done this before? Not a full feature, full length. Nope. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is how you learn your stuff. You, know. you have no idea how much I appreciate you watching it. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little horror film. He plays the bad guy. Yeah. Imagine I guess, that. Right? I guess if you got a beard, you're the bad guy. You also got a part in the movie because I noticed you're also a producer. I also, yes, I was a location scout. I did casting. I picked the music at the beginning and the end. So, yeah, I helped out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's, that's interesting because I was you know, being a guy with a beard, and I was the bad guy in a little movie made by a former student of mine. Um, nice. That, that got, so, it, was a, it was short, but it got shown in the New York Short Film Festival. Yeah. That's uh, funny, yeah. You know, yeah. He's, Bring he's, your he's, camera just up a little bit so we can see your full face, Steve. If, if, yeah. you, if, if you have Amazon a video, a yeah. Prime video, it's on there. It's called Death Blood 4. Give it a watch. It's yeah. uh, it's a fun little romp. And <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it answers so many of the unanswered questions in Death Blood Three. So, <laughs> well, see, that, that's part of the joke. There was no one, two, or three. Right. <laughs> well, they do show uh, previously. Yes. There. They, he used the 
the uh, the trailers for one, two, and three as if those movies existed. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's, it's pretty. It, it, I it, I I thought it was. I'm not going to say it's a great movie. <laughs> you know, I, I'm okay with that. You yeah. know, I mean, that was my first time I've ever been in front of a camera doing any acting. So um, yeah. I, I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> I I uh, I went into radio because I wanted to be an actor. So I figured at uh -huh. in order to pay the bills while I was trying to get acting jobs, I could do radio. Huh. How'd that work out for you? Oh, I never, <laughs> I never, I, I, I never, technically I never made a movie. Okay. I've been in movies, but technically I never made a movie. Well, may, maybe someday you'll get to be in a movie. Huh? I said, maybe someday. Yeah, maybe someday. Yeah. Well, it's a little late now, I guess, you know. Plus, the radio career went... I was an extra in a movie once. You were an extra? I was an extra in the movie Up the Down Staircase. Oh, wow. They grabbed a, they grabbed a bunch of schoolyard kids. I was among them. And we sat and did a scene in an auditorium at Heron High School on about 59th and 10th Avenue. Mm. Hot as hell, boring as hell. One scene took eight hours. Right. And oh. all my job was was to sit in the auditorium, listen to the principal, and act as if I was falling asleep, which was <laughs> very easy to do. Yeah, well, movies, uh, oh, they look, come on in. Oh, does she have pants on today? Your pants yeah. are on, right? <laughs> Your pants are on. This is my, this is my, well, this is Marjorie. Hi, how you doing? Hi, Marjorie. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, she's the fit one in the family. Yes, yeah, she has a Peloton. Yes. Now. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, here, I'll turn it up a little bit no, so you no, can I'm hear me. I'm going to leave. I'm, I was on my way to another room. Yeah. Wow. How's the Peloton? I love it. I got it on April 29th, and I was one of the last deliveries. They couldn't yeah. keep up with their demand. Their stock went up 86%. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. I've yeah. been trying to buy a bike. I can't find a goddamn bike out there. That's, you know, they're all, they're all sold out. Yeah. I have a 21 inch, a 21 gear one that I'm, that's for sale. <laughs> well, I'm in California, so it might be a little tough. Yeah. <laughs> She also has a city bike she could sell you, too. <laughs> Thanks a lot. She, she didn't like that joke because this, what happened to her was she, she decided, well, she likes her Peloton, but, you know, she wants to get, she'll go use city bikes, too. That would be good. She could city bike all the way to work every day. $100, $115, $20 a year, right? And then she can use it as much as she wants for the next year. So she goes out for the first time the other day with her girlfriend. They drive around a little bit, ride around a little bit on their uh, city bikes to see if she can still ride a bike, which she could. And then they go back to put the thing in the, in the thing. And her girlfriend says, yeah, it's fine. It's red. And they leave. Well, red means it hasn't locked in. Uh, green means it's locked in. <laughs> so then she gets a thing in the mail that says to her, uh, you, you're, you've been out for three hours. <laughs> oh, my. She said, uh, so she calls them and they say, she said, I returned it to the rack. And they said, well, you probably didn't really place it in the rack properly because it doesn't register as having been returned. Um, uh, it turns out, then she goes back to the bike rack to see if it's there, and it's not there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So okay. now it, she, it's stolen, <laughs> basically. It might not have been – I claimed to her that it might not have been stolen. It could have been somebody else wanted a city bike, took that one, didn't realize that it was all ready to go, yeah. and then took it. So uh, um, uh, she calls them back up, and they say, go to the police department and report it. So she goes down to the police department to report it, and they say, oh, we don't take reports on that anymore. There are just too many of them. <laughs> oh, brother. Yeah. So then she calls them back, and they say, you got to have a, a police report. She, she says they won't do it. You know, she's been wow. going around and around on this. Then I look it up online, and they go, well, if you, if you lost your bike or something, uh, to replace it costs $1,200. Oh, 
Oh, now, wow. I don't know if you've seen these things, but <laughs> the only thing probably below a city bike is a tricycle, okay? <laughs> you know, if they're worth $1,200, I'm a monkey's uncle, which I could be, actually. Uh, so uh, she now is completely turned off using the city bike. You know, I mean, uh, I mean yeah. What what is this? Harbinger down. What is that? What is that? Our systems, our our test systems were in a movie. Oh, oh really? When I was trying to log on, you guys were talking about movies. I'm I'm oh. trying to log on, I'm having problems. Oh wow. this is the tear is just beneath the surface. Woo! Oh, so there's it. We actually saw uh, parts of the movie. We got in it, we got Invited to the movie, but it never made it. They never made it out. But they had a, you know, it's like a, it's like a movie. Um, um, you know, the thing, you know, the Stephen King, the thing, sort yeah, of something yeah. goes in. Yeah. And they use, they use our system in the movie to test for to see that it's an alien and blah 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 blah. Yes. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah. So uh, they gave us shirts and everything, but never made it out to <laughs> release. The only, the only, I was. Uh, let's see. I was. I'm. I was in. Uh, you remember the movie One Fine Day with George Clooney and. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Michelle that. Pfeiffer. I'm in that. And you go. Really? Where really? are you in that? And I go. Michelle Pfeiffer's affair, love affair. No, no. Here's what <laughs> happens. It's it first. It opens up with her getting up in the morning, and sending the kids off to school or something like that, and then. There's a clock radio that goes off in his apartment, and he gets up. And what's on the clock radio, if you listen really closely? Uh, you. you. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. <laughs> well, it would be cool. I didn't get paid for it. You can barely hear it. If you have surround sound and you kill the front speakers, you can hear the whole thing. I want to hear the what, – what's the name again? i got to watch One it. Fine Day. All right. I'm One right now. Day. Uh, well, what were they recording from you? What were you on? Was it Live 105 or yeah, one of the Live 105? 105. Yeah. yeah, they uh, they just all they wanted was first, they said they called me. And they said, "Do you mind uh, letting us use uh, uh, some of your morning show on, in a movie?" And I said, "Okay, sure, why not?" And I said, "How much am I going to get paid?" And they said, "Nothing." So I said, "Go ahead, I'm a whore." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I was supposed to Personally, be... I'd rather wake Michelle Pfeiffer up, but... There was oh, yeah. a movie called Strange Days. It was done by Catherine Bigelow. Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes, yeah. yeah. I like that movie. Yeah. Well, you remember at the beginning, there's an announcer who's saying it's New Year's Eve in yeah. New York City, blah, 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 blah. And is uh, doing a talk show or something like that. They, uh, they t took me out to Skywalker Ranch and huh. said... What we need is a temp track for this movie. Uh, and could you just pretend like you're doing a talk show? You know. And so I, I did it. And they said at Skywalker Ranch, they said, this is terrific. This is great. We're going to suggest to Bigelow that she use you as the voice. I mean, we've already got the tracks and it's perfect. You know, it sounds like a real radio announcer. And um, uh, <laughs> hello, Rick Sheckman. Hello, Alex. Anyway, I didn't get the gab net, so it took me a while. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, he, first of all, no, but anyway, so she, uh, they, they sent it down there and she hired an actor to play me. Oh, jeez. So, you know, but they used the temp track while they were setting the whole thing up. But that, that was my other brush with fame. My biggest oh. brush with fame was that I had a, a morning show and I had a, Newswoman named Lori Thompson, and I get a call from Pixar. It says we're doing a movie, uh, and we want to have two characters based on you guys. Oh wow! And have you come in and do the voice for these two characters? Okay, and would you be interested? And this is ten o'clock in the morning when I got off the air, and I said, "Sure, I'd be interested." You know, at that time. Pixar had only done Toy Story, so their reputation wasn't as big as it is now. Mm. Uh, and I said, sure, I would love to. So uh, they said, we'll call you back at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, they called me back at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They said, well, plans have changed. We have a new, we're going to go in a different direction. Oh, 
well, you know, come on. Don't call me in the first place and get me all juiced up that I'm going to have a cartoon character that, you know, is supposed to be me, you know, and she's going to have a cartoon character that's supposed to be her. You know, so that was my other pressure. Have I ever done a movie? I think I did. Did I do one? I can't remember. I, if I did, it was so insignificant. Here, I, read, I got one. I read they didn't use you in the, in the beginning of Groundhog Day. Remember when he wakes up? Oh, yeah. Groundhog Day. If you would have done the announcer then, that would have been great because you would have done that like 20 times. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, I, right. I think only, the guy only had to do it once because it has to be the same every time, you know. Yep. Right, right. How you doing, Shaggy? Very good, Ben. Yeah, this is uh, Shaggy from his bedroom. He never gets off that bed. We go. To, I go to his house. I, I get a chair from the other room. Sit down. He lies on that bed. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice work if you can get it. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. He. Uh, you know. For years he worked for David Letterman. Well, and then, Thirty-three years of working. I can lie in bed now. Yeah. He got. Uh, he got laid off because Dave decided to quit. So, you know, he has a. Where do you go from there? Oh, he would probably get the Regis Philbin show, but that wouldn't have lasted too long either. So they don't pay very well. Yeah, right. My, one of my female cousins was a page at Letterman when he was at NBC. Oh, really? Yeah. Was a page? She was a page. Yeah, yeah. just a. Uh, I, I guess she was on the air once or twice though for something. I'm not sure. Oh, they. Well, used... we used the pages a lot back at NBC. Yeah. 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 I watched it, you know, I told Shecky, I was watching a lot of those old Letterman shows from NBC, and man, were they fun. It oh, looked man. like you guys were having the time of your life, except for Dave, of course, who was always miserable, right? <laughs> yeah, he was having a better time then, other than fighting with Merrill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it was, uh, it was a, uh, just a really fun show. Well, it was free and wheel. I've told you, you know, it wasn't that corporate CBS type show. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't for the big, it wasn't, how can I call it? It wasn't for the big bucks. You could, you were being paid to possibly fail. No, no, we were paying, being paid nothing. And so was Dave, you know, at yeah. that point. But I mean, it was a matter Eight of this year. Having... He got us medical insurance, which we didn't have <laughs> up until then. Wow. Wow. So uh, it was it was a great show that that NBC show. It's just too uh, bad the only place you can see him now is you can catch him on YouTube. I think. Yeah, yeah it's on Giller's page. But uh, it's too bad that uh, I know that at one point didn't they send it over to like A and E or some place like that? I, I I produced that series. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because um. Was it Rollins or NBC stole it and Jack Rollins thought that was a great idea. Yeah. Dave was totally against it. And they called me in and said, we want you to leave the show for a year to produce this series. And I'm like, and we're going to replace your job with somebody else. And I said, oh, and in a year, I'm getting my job back. And there was that kind of like hesitation. <laughs> So I was able to keep my regular job and do that job and got double salary. Oh, good. Okay. That's good. Hello, Mandy. Good to see you, see you in a couple of weeks, you. but it's always nice to see you. Uh, uh, you know, I do this thing on Mondays and I get almost an entirely, with the exception of Brian, entirely different audience. And now Robert is calling the late show as well. And we have a guy on there named Phil who is a right winger. And Robert doesn't let him get away with anything. Right, Brian? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. I made the mistake, and I, I was friends with Phil first before I started calling in every day. <laughs> when you're friends with him, it's a little hard to dig in. Yeah, exactly. Very nice, very nice guy, you know. Well, I, I just got a very never... nice letter about Robert uh, from somebody who said, I really love him on the show. He's more intelligent than the rest of you. <laughs> That's what you said. And uh, I, you know. I don't care because I am stupid, you know. That only cost me 25 bucks. Yeah. Uh, but I sent it to him, and he sent me back a whole note thanking me for sending it to him. And you told me about your history and that you had been yes. accepted to West Point. Yes. Yes, that's true. And yeah. I had to turn it down due to my mom taking ill. 
And mm -hmm. um, I wound up at a little local college. And within a year's time, I went from going to West Point to out in the streets protesting the war. <laughs> and part of that radicalization was thanks to you, I listened to you religiously back then. And that's when you had Abby and Jerry on and th that mm -hmm. sort of person. And I, a lot of what you guys were saying back then really made sense to me. And yeah. so it, it helped me form who I was politically. And by the way, right now we are being visited by the cutest kid in the world. <laughs> Let her show her. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Oh, now, she's, now she's gonna play shy. Oh, now she's Come gonna, here. oh, okay. She's like, she's like a cat, you know. Yeah, yeah she, she took my phone and she just snapped all kinds of pictures of herself. All <laughs> there she is, there she is. Oh, she's <laughs> now that, that's adorable, isn't it, Jackie? Look at yes, that. absolutely. I mean, if I had a kid, I would want that one. In fact, if Brian uh, is looking someday, I'll steal her. <laughs> yeah. I'll take payments. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take payments. Hi, Mandy. Hi. We haven't heard from you in a while, but uh, you're you're where again? You're you're somewhere. I'm right outside of Atlanta. All right. So, oh boy, you're in Georgia. Oh, good. Yeah, and I had to. I was going to share my quick little story about COVID. I had to go um, get tested. I was exposed to three people wow. that were positive, but none of them ever showed symptoms. Um, they're kind of convinced that maybe they really didn't have it, but I went and got tested. I was negative, but it took a week to get the test. Yeah. And so I just had to stay home. Yeah. My employer oh. just said, well, it was, it was a work lunch that I was around these people. Yeah. Um, so they found out the next day they were, they were, they went tested. And I was like, why did you have lunch with people if you went and get tested? Well, yeah. well, you know, I mean, people are being, some people are being stupid. We're so happy here in New York. I know, I know, I, I, if I were out in Queens right now, we'd go out and celebrate, Shecky. <laughs> if anything, we're still open. I never knew yeah. we would ever celebrate not being number one. <laughs> we're yeah. not only not number one anymore, we're not well, number two either. Right. Well, did you read about the Florida Marlins? Yes. Yeah. yes. How many people got tested? Sixteen or something? Twelve of them, I believe it is, had fourteen positive. I but keep they, saying they, that. It came from Atlanta, apparently. Oh wow! It's inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable. They're not going to finish this season up. I just craziness. Oh, no. I keep saying they're not going to finish any pro season. Nope. Right when nope. they have one person nope. pe test positive, it's through everything. It's but I was over. watching either the Mets or the Yankees yesterday, and the opposing team hits a home run, and they're in the dugout, jumping up and down, yeah. hugging and kissing, <laughs> and whatever. Yeah, yeah. At the first time, they were sort of fake doing it, you know, oh, the air yeah. stuff, yeah. and now they're high-fiving and everything, right back to normal. literally was kissing yeah. the other player when he came in the dugout. <laughs> Look, you know, I mean, I know how much I know how much Rick is a Yankees fan, right? And do you follow football too? Yeah, the Giants. Giants, and do you do basketball? I like the Nets, but I don't really watch them. Okay, but you're a sports fan. Yeah, and I like the Rangers, but I don't nevertheless, watch them. you know, if there isn't a sports season this year, it's not going to kill you, is it? As it yet, it's what almost August. Yeah, you know? yeah. and I mean, and the thing is that the. The main reason why everybody is so disappointed there's no sports is the gambling. No gambling. Right. <laughs> yeah. And remember all the people, Pete Rose, you gambled on baseball. You're never going to, you know, go to the Hall of Fame. Now it's like, oh, let's go gamble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gambling on cornhole right now. Yeah, but you know, they, they, back at, you know, <laughs> after these messages in the half inning and it's all gambling. Yeah. Going, so. But you know, what you've got going on in Georgia is insane. Your governor down there is a is an absolute asshole. I mean, what, <laughs> what he, the, the mayor of Atlanta says, I want to tell everybody to wear masks and <laughs> he then <laughs> sues her. Her, nobody else. There's been other cities, just Athens, Georgia, uh, which is where University of Georgia is. My daughter goes there. Yeah. They had a mass mandate. Is he and he's from Athens? Is he suing that mayor? No. Oh boy. Is that mayor Republican? He's, probably. 
Probably. I don't even know who the mayor is, but I mean, Savannah has something. There's other places that have the mandates, but he's only suing her for some reason. Because she's democratic. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she's tough. Yeah, she's, and she's talked back to him. And she's CNN. Woman. She's on CNN all the time, too. She's a woman and she's black. I was saying the other I day. I hate to say was, that, but I, I have a feeling. I mean, a lot of people are saying that. They were but. saying, who, who should Biden's uh, running mate be? And since he's painted himself into a corner already by saying it's going to be a woman when he was having a debate with Bernie Sanders, uh, he's now looking at women, and, and all of them happen to be black. Let's, let's go the extra, the extra mile. Except and yet, more. I think this one. I think she's on the list. I th is yeah, she on the list? Because she'd be perfect. Yeah, she's, Warren is on the list. She's, she's intelligent. I don't think she's she's tough. Tough. hi, Howard. Um, she's tough, and on top of that, uh, she looks really good. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, she and she has COVID. She had it, and so did her husband. Yeah, they actually had yes. the virus. Yeah. So, oh. but I don't understand why he just doesn't let people just. You know, I thought I thought conservatives like the whole local government thing and leaving it to decisions yeah. that local no, government. No, it, it, they, they believe in local government until it affects them. So Trump tells them differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, boy. Trump, did you see, see his wall? It's good. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> the hurricane blew down a little bit of his wall. <laughs> uh, and my feeling is to all those religious people who voted for him, uh, this may be God telling you something, mm -hmm. you know? Well, those people yeah. always say it's God telling us something when it's something oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, that we don't like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, I mean. You know, or we're anti-abortion, but we don't mind sending old people home from the hospital to die. Right. Uh, right. Well, I was going to say, that's the thing that gets me. Now it's all about why don't I have a choice? I should have a choice about what I do to my body and put. I mean, all these people are now pro-choice. Yeah, so pro I'm watching the news one night, and there's a woman saying, uh, it's my constitutional right not to wear a mask. <laughs> went, or wear clothing. Where, where in the Constitution wear. does yeah. that uh, say it? I mean, I don't uh, think there's, yeah, the, you know, what, freedom of speech? No, it's not freedom of speech. No, uh, I was just I was just told by a friend on 23rd Street, Trader mm -hmm. Joe's 23rd Street, there was a, two people without masks. They were told to wear masks. They beat up 10 people in the store. They grabbed a baseball bat from behind the counter and they hit the cashier Ooh, over the head. Yes. Someone else was bleeding. Um, uh, this is the kind of thing you have to deal with just people for are wasting people their masks. to wear a mask. There's no big deal to wear a mask. Uh, you know, I mean, it's look, it's, it's 90, uncomfortable, what is it, but what is it right it. now? It's 91 degrees outside right now. And it's, yeah, not it's not comfortable to wear a mask. Did but you see, to do did it. You, did you see the people in Walmart with the swastikas on their masks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. oh my God. No, I didn't do that. It's unbelievable. It's, it's just, uh, these are sick people. I'm looking but apparently for, their point was to say, this is what we've come to. It's become like a Nazi, uh, Nazi Germany. But it's like, are right. you stupid? You know, it's, like, it's beyond stupid. Yeah. It's Very. not an analogy. You know what's like Nazi Germany? And Nazi mask. Is what they're doing in Portland is like Nazi Germany. I mean, well, that's yeah. scary. Well, I mean, it's that not genocide, scary. but it's pretty brutal. It's not genocide yet. Mm -hmm. You know, but it is brutal and it is. Uh, 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 well, it's the stormtroopers taking right. people off the streets. Because they're demonstrating and because they're using their and peacefully, feet. many of them, many of most, them, most of them are peaceful, you know. But the moms. They, they showed the police, uh, the uh, uh, Seattle police or whatever, somebody showed some Molotov cocktails that were made. What they did is they stuck some rags into some jars and then they took pictures of them. That and a couple of uh, clips of, of, of ammunition. And I'm thinking, this is a setup, you know. This is a complete setup. How, how, it's still okay in, in uh, Hawaii, Howard? It's awesome. Douglas just <laughs> flew on by. I got like a couple sprinkles. Oh, okay. All right. You know, uh, you guys had a hurricane too, but they had a hurricane in Texas, uh, and they they you know they would they had I think what they have to do they had to test everybody for COVID before they could take them to the hospital. I mean, it was just insane. There was a meme going on here. Yeah. It was like, 
you know, you guys, you won't stay home, so we got a hurricane to make you stay home. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I mean, uh, um, uh, it, it's just it's it's insane. The whole thing, the whole. Didn't you say to me the other day, Shecky, that the whole country's falling apart? Oh, we're gonna have a civil war in oh. November. You think? <laughs> Oh, that's that's nice to think about. Well, yeah, it, it, nobody hears, it, they have all the guns. Nobody but hears. Also, <laughs> and I say too, it's blacks killing blacks. So if black lives matter, which they do, why are blacks killing blacks? Uh, and, and don't wear a Black Matters T-shirt while you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, my, I, uh, it's been my story that you know. They say Black Lives Matter, and I live in a predominantly black neighborhood here, and you should see how many blacks don't wear masks. I mean, it is, it's just, I mean, I'd say only 10% of the people out there wearing masks right now. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, don't wear a Black Lives Matter t-shirt and then not wear a mask, because it extends to you and your responsibility to your fellow man as well, you know? What the My song of the week this week is You Say Tomato, I Say Tomato, You Say Police, I Say Gestapo. <laughs> <laughs> did you make that up? No, a friend did, though. Oh, okay, but it's yeah. brilliant. It's brilliant. Uh, 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 Ma Mandy, now you have some daughters, right? Yes, I have two daughters, and one does live in Texas. Um, she goes to Texas A&M. And one lives in Georgia. Yeah, one lives. So here they're both in living in, in, uh, in hot zones. Right. So yeah, the one that goes to UGA, yeah, it's, um, she goes back to work at the end of this week. They're finally opening up her restaurant. Um, right. So we'll yeah. see how that goes. I mean, they're yeah. going to have to work. They're going to wear masks, of course. But yeah. Um, but the other one in Texas, um, she has. She's been a strict, strict, strict quarantiner. Like she hasn't been anywhere. She goes out to walk, and that's it. Right. Um, okay, good. And just she's gone to her school a couple of times, but other than that, well, very strict. So her birthday is next month. She'll be twenty-five. And I said, "Can I please come see?" <laughs> I knew she was going to say no. I mean, she, it's terrible. Are you crazy, mom? No way <laughs> am I going to let you come near me after you've been on an airplane. And Texas is terrible. So no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But are you allowed to travel from Georgia to Texas? Yeah, I could. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I would just kind of throw it out there. I would just throw it out no, there. No, but if just you were able, be you able to if you chose to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I could get a plane. I mean, I could get a plane ticket to Houston for like two hundred fifty dollars, and it's like an hour and a half drive to College Station. But she said, "No way! It's not like I'm gonna let you in this apartment. I don't go out anywhere. So what are we gonna do? You know?" Yeah, and you don't. You I said, just, "I just wanted to throw it out there because once 20 you leave birthday. work, you go straight home and stay home, right?" Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, I go to the store. Yeah. And then I go to the store for my mother, and I go take the steps to my mother. But I yeah. just wear a mask and I wipe everything down when I give it to her. And yeah. I sit across I, the room, have my mask on while we're yeah. visiting. I would come home. She hasn't left her apartment since March. I would come home and autoclave myself. <laughs> all over it, just, you know, steam clean every part, every inch of my body. There we go. Now I feel in Hawaii, Howard. Yeah, there you go. Isn't it interesting? I just realized that, you know, the coffee just kicked in. <laughs> the what just kicked in? Oh, the coffee just kicked in. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's only 1030 in the morning here. What are you guys doing up? <laughs> This is an amazing world. I mean, we got uh, we got uh, Robert in New Jersey, and we got Len. You're in California, right? Yep. And we got uh, Steve. He's in New York. We got Brian. He's in Northern California. We got Shecky. He's out in Queens. That's like being in another state. Uh, and let's see here. And uh, Mandy is in uh, what is it? Uh, Georgia. Suburban and, Atlanta. And Howard's in Hawaii. I mean, you know. This is the future I dreamed about, except it didn't have COVID virus involved, you know? Right. There's the rub, yeah. Thank you for doing Zoom. Why? Because <laughs> I watched you for a long time, but didn't want to deal with Skype. As soon as you did Zoom, I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I went to Zoom. I, you know, the reason I, went, I, reason I went to Zoom was it's, it is easier for people to use. In fact, it's a moron system. 
uh, Skype is much more difficult for people to master. I mean, it, it's still, it's simple to me, but it's not simple to, if I ask my mother to do Zoom, she, well, she'd have a hard time doing it because she's dead. But if, right. you know, if I got to talk to an old person and said, call me here, just click on this link. That's it. You know, and then you're in. Yeah, so it's, Plus it it's, handles. Yeah, I just I, I loaded the app on my yeah. mom's iPad so mm -hmm. she can look, watch church because I do it Zoom. Well, it does. It does do. Um, uh, what were you saying? It does what better? It, oh, Big groups, groups. groups. Yeah, yeah. I with uh, Skype. Yeah, I found groups. Skype. The other night we had twelve. Right, Friday night, no yeah, trouble. Had, one night I had fifteen here with no and no heavy breathing, and also it does <laughs> use up CPU. Right. whatever with skype my computer starts breathing heavier and uh after 10 people remember what would happen brian all of oh, yeah. time, some people would be would turn off and stuff yeah uh, one time i called i was like 10 or 11 and you could get my picture so I just and, and i couldn't be happier it. to see those people in trouble okay because <laughs> they've they've really yeah. screwed up. that was a good system and they screwed it up you know they didn't improve it they just made it worse, but it's owned by Microsoft. What do you expect? You know. Yeah. I'm a teacher. Well, well, do you and do you ever? I'm sorry. Do you advertise who's going to be on your nighttime show early before you start the show, or no, 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 no. no anybody can no. call. No, because no, because you had like Pearl on the other oh, night. Yeah, I, yeah. Like I don't think I don't I don't advertise it ahead of time, but usually mm -hmm. he's on once a week, and Kravitz is on once a week. Bubs okay. is on once a week. Oh, okay. My ex-wife is on once every two weeks. Okay. Robert and I are on every night, so yeah. Right, well, that, there's, right there. there, there's, yeah. there's a reason not to show up. <laughs> and Howard's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. it, it, um, Howard, Howard, hey, Howard was live streaming yesterday with a bunch of chicks. Woohoo! Yeah, I had a whole bunch of chicks. Where are you really? Where? <laughs> My house. They were little baby ones. Chickens. Oh, chicks. <laughs> oh, those. And a bunch of chicks. He was grabbing all of them. Where was he live streaming it? From Maui. I, I, I showed off the uh, sunset, and then... Uh, it was my turn to go help with the chicks, so I had to go down and I handed the phone to Mary, and she filmed me fondling each and every one of those chicks. <laughs> but a bump bum. Hey, it was bizarre. I just turned on my my phone, and all of a sudden I see her grabbing well, the well, chicks. Where was he doing this? Were you doing this on on uh, YouTube? Or oh, Facebook Live. Facebook, oh, Facebook, and, uh, yeah. Facebook Live. Thank you. What happens is I make a little round for the baby chicks so they can run around on the grass during the day, and then I bring them in at night, you know, so they don't get eaten. So you probably yeah, got about a million viewers on that one, because I find that you know, when you do stuff like that, you know, uh, one time, do you, you know the most people I ever had watching anything was when I saw that across from me after a rain, there was rain dripping on the wall on the building across from me. So I put a camera out there and I put the thing up there, um, the slow cam, uh, paint dripping, paint, well, water drying. And uh, it got something like a thousand viewers. And I went, well, why don't I do what I do? Why do I work this hard, you know? When all I have to do, and the next thing I was gonna do was uh, I was gonna Put some paint on a slab and put a camera there and let people watch paint dry. I'm sure somebody's done that already. Yeah, I'm sure they've done it already. Yeah, I I watched six. I was waiting for something to happen when you have it outside your window, trying yeah. to figure out what was going on. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think a, a channel where it's like there is one in Europe called Slow TV, and they do stuff like that: paint drying, just shooting a street, and you can watch people walking down it. You know, just slow stuff and it's very very popular the people turn around and say i wonder you wonder who's walking down the street yeah yeah so what are you watching lately shecky shecky watches a lot of stuff well i told you i was watching the bronco billy festival out of niles california <laughs> which is on which was on youtube this weekend bronco billy i never oh bronco billy anderson yeah oh, uh, where? bronco billy anderson ran the SNA company where they hired Charlie Chaplin and he had a yeah. studio in Niles, California. Yep. Yeah. Fifty minutes outside of San Francisco. 
Yeah, yeah it's very close to very close to where I live. Niles yeah, Canyon and uh, Fremont. Yeah, Niles. They always have a they have a car show there, and they have all antique stores on the side. Really nice. And they have a museum there that a woman named Dorothy Bradley runs. And once a year, they do the Bronco Billy Festival. And this year, it was all on YouTube. That's the so town. Out, that it, out of YouTube, it was a really good documentary on your friend Al St. John that they posted. Yeah, Al St. John was one of the Keystone cops. And when I was a kid growing up, my parent, my father knew Al St. John, who lived in L.A. And we used to go to his pool and swim in his pool. And I... He was later on. He was known as Al Fuzzy St. John in Buster. In Western. Huh? In Westerns. In Westerns, yeah. Ah. But he was Roscoe Arbuckle's nephew. Yes. Uh, and I didn't know any of that when I knew him. All I knew him was as as, as Al. Okay. And I didn't know he was anybody that famous because he didn't have a beard when he wasn't being be fuzzy. Western sidekick. Yeah. Huh. But no, they, it was like a 30-minute presentation on him and Buster Keaton that they stuck on YouTube last night. Oh, wow. wow. About the similarity between him and Buster and their careers. and you know. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, see, that's, that's what he's watching lately. N Niles is the town where the dog was the mayor for many years, right? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> really? Yeah, there's a, the dog is actually in the bar. If you go into Niles, that's 20 minutes from here. You go into the bar. There's a they have a dog, and you pull his you pull his tail, and it's a ta he's a beer tap now. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is a stuffed dog. This is a stuffed dog, and this dog was the mayor of Niles for five, ten years. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah, pull, that, you push his tail, and it dispenses yeah, beer. It Where dispenses from his ass? Beer. Yeah. Let me look it up on YouTube. I'm sure it must be here somewhere. <laughs> hey, we hey, still. Alex. Need Remember, Vice presidential what candidate. Saying. What were you saying, Robert? <laughs> what were you saying, Robert? We still need a vice presidential candidate. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. Well, as yeah, a dog. Have... Yeah. They have a Bronco Billy pizza. It's awesome over there. Oh, now really? I know why the reference now. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, hey, well, I'm mistaken. Do you think they're just... um, well, Lynn? Go ahead. I was just going to say the dog was mayor of Sonol, not Niles. Oh, which okay. is right. Yeah. Oh. And there's a picture of him. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to see it, but uh, look him up, Bosco, the dog mayor of Sonol. <laughs> Good. Good. Right. Sorry, Mandy. Go ahead. No, I was when somebody said something about the vice president uh, nominee. I was like, when when is that going to be announced? Just like during the convention. Probably, <laughs> uh, pro probably on a Thursday at seven o'clock. I don't. For know. a Friday night when no yeah. one's paying attention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, it's not so like bizarre. everybody runs around saying like, I'm voting for Biden because of his vice presidential candidate. No. You know, but nobody it voted. Nice to have, it would be nice to have somebody out there, right, on the TV yes. shows attacking yeah. every day. And that's well, what, 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 what the vice presidential candidate does. Bulldog. And they're finally running. Is they're going to all the places the, the main candidate can't or d isn't going or has to cover but he can't be there and you know, Biden uh, that means basically everywhere yeah pretty yeah. much everywhere yeah. 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 it's gonna be a whole different kind of campaign and as a matter of fact I think the thing that gives Biden the true advantage is that Trump can't hold all his massive Nazi rallies you know um, yeah thanks COVID <laughs> thanks COVID um, you know, I mean, COVID is handed, I, I think, is what's going to be the undoing of, of Donald Trump. But here's what I'm worried about. I was not going to leave. I was mentioning this to Shecky the other day. It's not so much that he's not going to leave, but they're two and a half months between the election and the inauguration. Yep. And in that time, I, Trump is so vindictive. What damage is he going to do? Everything he can to fuck up this country in two and a half months, and there's nobody there to stop him. Yep. He's been doing it for four years. Yeah, why no, stop now? Wait for two and a half months. He'll sign every proclamation he can, you know. He's going to pardon everybody. Yeah. Uh, you know. th I believe the Confederate flag should fly everywhere and we should go back to calling them Negroes, you know. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful of that. Me too. Well, if Biden wins and is inaugurated and he leaves, then he can just wipe that out. <laughs> 
can he just well, undo well, then, it? Then, as Nancy yes. Pelosi said, we may have to fumigate the White House. <laughs> she yeah. said he, she doesn't believe he's going to leave that easily. I don't like this not leave narrative, though, which makes everyone think the Democrats well, have to. They ha we have to win by a landslide. We don't. Yeah. We have to win by one fucking vote. One right. vote. And they will get him out of there if he loses the election. Yeah, he, but he's the definitely going to make it happen. You, know you know what he's setting up? He's setting up the excuse why he lost, and he's going to... That'll be rigged. He'll say it's rigged. ...to leave, and that is the mail-in voting. Yeah. Right. right. Even though, how does he vote? Yeah. Mail -in. By mail. By mail. Uh, it's not the one vote. Stay there the vote. What did you say, Jackie? I said Utah is completely mail-in voting, and yep. it's a Republican state. Yep. So if mail-in voting is a Democratic plot, then why is Utah completely mail-in? And so no military is supposed to be able to vote? Right. Nobody yeah, overseas? Right. That's true. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, the only thing that bothers me about the mail-in vote, and I've been a victim of this, is that I wrote in, we've filed all my stuff and sent it you know, went to the post office and sent it because you got to do it by mail to get my vote by mail. All right. Marjorie gets her ballot. I don't get one. Mm. Are you I registered? write them. I write them 10 times. I don't get a reply. I told you yesterday, I, I mailed in, but then I also did it online and I got one ballot. And I'm not sure which one I got. But then, as I said to you yesterday, I still went across the street and voted in person because I don't trust it at the moment in New York State. Yeah. Mm. What, happen, what happens though, if you get the right to vote by mail, but then you go down to your local precinct? Oh, no, you're okay because you haven't filed a vote. Yes. Oh, but once you file the vote, then you, if you went to your precinct, they'd say you're not eligible here. Theoretically, yes. Okay. Theoretically. See, here in Jersey... Here in Jersey, what they do is, I'm not a registered Democrat or Republican, and so for primary elections, I don't receive a ballot. Right, because okay. you're an independent. They just simply pass me by. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if that's the case with, with you, Alex, but perhaps it was a primary yeah. election, and I, you're I, not I, I need, I need, uh, I need a, a, a mail-in ballot because I'm, uh, I, I have cancer. Uh, uh, and I'm over it. Are they going to count it, or are they going to figure out a reason to throw it in the garbage? Yeah, but here's the thing: that he's going to use that as his big excuse. He's going to try and hold up kicking him out of office until they can get, get this to go to court. Okay, let's see if I can. He's going to want to talk. Answer, answer what? your question, Robert. I mean, I can't. The only reason I'm not an independent is because you can't vote in a primary in New York. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. wait a minute. That's Close why time. I, wait a minute. That's why I didn't get a ballot. Right. right. If you're independent, because you're not you're registered Democrat. Oh, my God. Or primary. Republican. And it was a primary. You're an idiot. That's why I didn't. It was a primary, get. correct. Now, where's yeah. my. I thought of that when you said this two months ago. Right. My other question thinking. is where's my goddamn passport? <laughs> that I can't help. About three or four yeah. months ago, we sent away to get me a new passport, and it hasn't gotten here yet. When I went on and looked at the passport bureau, they said we processed 150,000 of them during the COVID crisis, but there's still a million and a half waiting. Oh, oh my God! Where are you going? Uh, well, uh, well, uh, you know, I can't go anywhere because no country will accept me. Yeah. So now well, yeah. today I refiled for my trusted traveler thing because you know. We talked about it yesterday, where the Department of Homeland Security lied about New York State. Yeah. It went right through. Yeah, it went through? It went through. I mean, I don't have the new card. Yeah. What happened was the... And my credit card gives me the credit, so I don't even have to pay for it. The, the Department of mm -hmm. Homeland Security made it so New Yorkers could not get that kind of passport, which is like the fast pass to get through... It, uh, get through to get through um, customs. Custom. And and for for I guess six months. Uh, six, Cuomo, did it happen in February? I think he filed a he filed a suit against the government for doing that, saying that they're only doing it because we're a democratic state. Other states have it, and you're not doing it. it had to do with driver's licenses. 
Yeah, it had to do with driver's license. And he said, I was willing to give all the information of driver's licenses to the government. That, you know. But they finally, I think it was on Thursday or some time like that, did a, uh, uh, a recant and said, okay, well, we're not going to challenge the suit. We're going to do Well, they also admitted they lied. Yeah. And so now uh, uh, Cuomo is asking that the head of the Department of Homeland Security be charged criminally. Well, the House is investigating it this week, next week, whenever, yeah. this whole situation. Yeah. And so it, it was really a mess. But what here, here was the, uh, uh, the uh, if, if you want to, go online and look at YouTube and look at his, at uh, Cuomo's last uh, press conference, because he does, he reams Trump and the administration, um, a, a, a wretched asshole, okay? And uh, he said... That the problem was that what this created at customs was a lineup you wouldn't believe because it slowed the whole thing down. And what was that doing during that, that period of time when those three million people were coming in from out of the country? Yeah. It was spreading sure. the COVID virus. And so it enabled the COVID virus to, to you know, grow bigger, you know. That would be a great title for the next Trump biography, A Wretched Asshole. Yeah. I, was, I was about to say, I like that description. Wretched Asshole. It was like the extra. Well, they wretched, needed. a wretched asshole for a wretched asshole. What can we say? <laughs> you know. So what are you working on, Mandy? You're, you're, you're an accountant, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, in, I'm putting in the American Express bill for the month. <laughs> My wife has to do a lot of that too. She's not an accountant, but she's an office manager. And there are only four people in the office, so she, the office manager does everything. Yeah. But the only trouble is the company's in China. So today oh. her, her mail isn't working. And she oh, had no. to write a letter to China, to their IT guy, and say, fix it, give me a new password or whatever. Mm -hmm. And of course, when she had this problem was this morning, and it was like at eight o'clock in the morning when it's eight o'clock in China. So she's got to wait till tomorrow Ugh, to yeah. see if they do it. You know. Ugh. But That's uh, uh, you uh, know what was a terrible story today? It's sort of a what? cautionary tale. I learned that a pitcher on the Boston Red Sox named Eduardo Rodriguez. Now, mind you, he's in good health. He has no underlying conditions. He's he has heart disease twenty-seven. Now. He had, he had coronavirus. He cleared that, took two positive tests, I mean negative tests, where he was in the clear, and suddenly now he's down with myocarditis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Echocarditis. Lining of the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. And here's a guy that, is that noise as fit as can be. You know, where's, that, scary. where's that noise coming from? Right, feedback, but I'm muted, so it's not me. No, no, it's not you. I don't know what it is. It, 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 well, it, let me mute for a second. Yeah, it's something in your neck of the woods there. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is is there something? Is, is something in your room buzzing? No. <laughs> I'll mute myself. And Brian, it's not you, Brian. No. Yeah. I don't think it's me, is it? No. No, it's not you. No. Not me. Uh, but anyway, so um, um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it, um, um, there's a story out. Of, uh, Mandy, out Mandy, Mandy try to mute. Not you. Try muting. Yeah, just for a second. Oh, you. No, it's not you, Mandy. It's not you. Okay, who else is who? Do we have left? Lynn, it stopped when you when you muted. Jackie, hey, uh, unmute, unmute, and Howard, unmute, uh, and Brian, unmute. Yeah, yeah. Now, Lynn, unmute. It's you. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know what that buzz is. What part, the, the only thing that's running is the fan on the computer. I wonder if that's what it is. That ain't that. I'll stay me. I'll stay muted. Well, turn up the computer, see if that helps. Yeah, just uh, turn it on when you <laughs> want to talk. So anyway, uh, Ryan, Ryan. 
Gee, I'm having such a good time. I may let this run a little longer. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a great group of people, isn't it, Brian? Yes, it is. And I, I was happy I got off work early and I forgot about it. I got home, my alarm got went off. So, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then we get it's, it's, it was the one time we get Shecky because he isn't in bed, falling asleep, and yeah, well, Shecky, I told, I told, I told Alex I went on your Facebook. Yeah, I had to see how you were standing up. <laughs> What were you saying, uh, uh, Chef? I don't know when Tony's on. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, see? Yeah. There you oh. go. Yeah. And uh, he, he... So, as Alex knows, Tony came to visit this weekend. Yeah. Your pal, Tony. Yes, people are cannolis. <laughs> All we ever get with Tony is his hideous wallpaper. That's the only thing <laughs> we get. He's got this hideous <laughs> wallpaper that I swear... Uh, it's like it, it, it's the reason Anthony Perkins stuffed his mother in Psycho. You know, they had <laughs> wallpaper like that. And it drove him crazy. Well, it's a 1950s house. Yeah. 40s yeah. house. Well, well yeah. also his mother decorated it. Okay. He's got these chintz curtains. Oh, it's horrible. It's just ghastly. You know. Yeah. Um, so, Alex, to change the change of stuff. Did you watch Star Girl yet? Star Girl. The new you episode. Watch? Yes. Very good episode. Yeah. Very sweet episode. I mean, you know, a good episode. Very good episode. Uh, this is a show now that's on DC, and, and it's also they run it on the CW, do they? CW tomorrow night. Yeah. And it's about this young girl. How old is she? 15, 16? Yeah. Now, and, you know what her what, where her name came from, don't you? What, Courtney? Uh, Courtney was Jeff Johns' sister who died on TWA flight. Was it 880 or whatever the, the really? one that got blown up? And when he created Star Girl, he named the character after his sister. Wow, that's quite an interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. Because her, for her, she was Courtney. Yeah. Well, it's a good little show. It's a good little show. Uh, he's he's gotten me into these DC animated cartoon features, and they're really good. They're better than any of the live action movies. So if you ever get a chance to watch them, although probably not the cup of tea for anybody here. Um, so anyway. Um, well, yeah, the wife, the wife likes all the superhero stuff. She loves those kind of movies. Can I, can I make, I want to make a statement here. I've been watching them drag John Lewis's body around for a week now. Yeah, he's back in Washington somehow. You know, and all I can think of is, do we have any Jews here besides Shecky and I? And, yeah, okay, Steve is a Jew. Um, uh, I got bar mitzvah. We, we bury our people, what, two days? Was that it? It's it one day, I think. One day. Yeah. One day, two days. It, the, part, of the, part of the reason, it's a good reason, is, is the faster you bury somebody, the the faster you the family can then get on. back to moving on, okay? Uh, but as we used to do as a joke, the Goyim like to keep their people around for weeks, you know? <laughs> and I, all I'm thinking about is, if you really honor the man, don't drag his body everywhere. He's been to, he, he started in Washington where he died, and then he went down to Georgia where he lived. Going back over the bridge. And then back down to Selma. And but he's back Nebraska, in Washington. And now they're picking him up and they're putting him on a plane and they're sliding you know, down the Trump back of a said, truck I'm and driving him down to the what? No, Donald Trump has said, I'm not going to the Capitol to, to visit the crypt, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. It's it just, is a little much. No, this morning, this morning, yeah, I, I, I think that it, it you can honor the guy and he should be honored. This, this was one of those people who pretty much lived a decent life. life, okay? He was an honor to the human race, okay? Uh, and, yes. and so I, I believe you can honor him, but gee, you don't have to drag his goddamn body around for, for oh, how many days has it been now? He was, was, was 3,000 3, miles news. short from, uh, from on his mileage plus miles, so they wanted to get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's when something. on the news this morning, I was like, when did he die again? I mean, they're still schlepping his body around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like two weeks ago, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, and, and the trouble is that that's all the news is carrying, like MSNBC. It's, oh, John Lewis all the time. And I'm going, 
you know, I mean, I I love the guy. Okay, I think that he deserves. <laughs> but do we, do, a, do we need a minute by minute? You know? We don't need a minute by minute. We don't need seven uh, days know, of this description. You know, right. it's like the old SNL Franco. You know, still dead. <laughs> he's still yeah, dead. he's still dead. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So I'm I'm glad he remains I'm, dead. I'm glad nobody here is saying you're full of shit, Bennett. So. Right. Yeah, I don't think he would agree with it. Uh -huh. But the fact I don't fact think he would agree with it. Now, it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He went from Washington to Georgia, and now, uh, yeah, he's back in Washington. And then they're going to take him by the Martin Luther King statue. Now, again, I don't know <laughs> if I'm being wrong in this, but this, it was, you know, the statue was created by a Chinese sculptor. And I swear to you, Martin Luther King in that statue does not look like Martin Luther King. He looks Chinese. Am I right or am I wrong? You're right. Yeah, I guess I I nobody has looking. the guts to say it's a horrible goddamn statue. Why don't we get a statue that looks like Martin Luther King? I was mm -hmm. going to make a very bad Martin Luther King joke, but I won't. Are there bad Martin Luther King <laughs> jokes? Is it time <laughs> yet? Has enough time passed that we can do Martin Luther it's, King? It's not too soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, well, listen, I really enjoy this. I, I, you know, I, I say to myself, gee, I'm, I, I'm painting myself into a corner by doing these things every Monday, and then I come right. on here, and it's the best show I do all week, <laughs> you know? And I don't even have all the fancy opening and all that. I can't do that with doing Zoom direct to Facebook. I told you, you don't need that. Yeah, yeah, we just need that. Uh, and there are a lot of people watching, too, so... What the heck, you know? Last week I got uh, more people us. watching it. It's, it's helping what? us get through a bad time, too. Uh, uh, you, yeah, really. and plus then we, we get to see uh, 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 Adrian, right? Did that's I get right. the name right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a kid worth kidnapping right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Careful, Alex, there'll be a knock on your door in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, she's, <laughs> yes. she's a, they're listening. Yeah, she is adorable. And how old are Thank your you, kids, Andy? Because you certainly don't look that old. My kids? Yeah. Oh, um, they're well. I've got the one will be twenty-five next month, and then wow. the other one's twenty. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, and I had them when I was old. <laughs> how old were you? Twenty. I'm fifty-four. You're fifty-four. Would anybody believe that? No. 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 <laughs> Thanks. No. I believe Adrian was 54, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks to all of you. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate it. Hope we see you later on in the week. Steve, you're welcome. To, uh, thanks for joining us. And, and Lynn, call us sometime on the other show, too. <laughs> of course, Brian will call. And thank you, Adrian. Uh, and uh, Hi, thanks, Alex. Jackie. I really appreciate it. Always appreciate Take it. Care. Andy, thank you. <laughs> and Howard Dennis in Hawaii. Oh in Hawaii. Huma huma nuka nuka wapa apa. Well, anyway, uh, just <laughs> Thanks, give Alex. everybody, give a big wave goodbye and I'll say goodbye to wave you. Goodbye. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, that's our, that's our citizen. Bye, guys. That's how, safe, how, it, how it goes. And thank, thank you to you, everybody Alex. who is watching right now. And uh, we'll see you maybe next Monday on Facebook. But in the meantime, weekdays on uh, GabNet, J-B-N-E-T dot net.